take a look at the latest satellite images of the Sahara, and you'll be in for a big surprise. The otherwise barren and dry wasteland is suddenly showing off rippling lakes and sprouting green areas. And although this is only the result of surprisingly heavy rainfall, researchers actually assume that by the end of the 21st century, the largest dry desert on Earth will be significantly greener than we are used to these days. But if you like, the Sahara will be practically restored to its factory settings. After all, not so long ago, the extreme desert world was still a flourishing paradise. The Sahara stretches from the Atlantic coast of Africa to the Red Sea, and with an area of no less than 9 million square kilometers, it's about 26 times larger than Germany. And although the largest dry desert in the world is often perceived as an endless sea of dunes, the sandy desert actually only makes up about 20% of the Sahara, because it consists mainly of rocky and boulder-strewn terrain. Nevertheless, it is undisputed that the merciless wasteland is one of the most extreme habitats on Earth, and that it also has a few surprises up its sleeve. Because even if it may sound almost unbelievable at first, a few months ago, the colossal desert suddenly transformed into a lake landscape adorned with plants. The heavy rainfall that poured over the Sahara in September last year meant that the experts had to look twice to believe their eyes when they looked at the corresponding satellite images. In fact, the rainfall was so extreme that the NASA Earth Observatory titled its report on the satellite images, A Deluge in the Sahara. In detail, an extratropical cyclone that hit the northwest of the Sahara on September 7th and 8th caused widespread flooding in Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. Tragically, 20 people lost their lives as a result. But from a purely scenic point of view, an analysis of the satellite images showed that the desert had gained a few deep blue spots. More specifically, these are normally dried up lakes that were refilled with water as a result of the rainfall. The longer strips of high water were displayed in a lighter shade of blue, and with the cool water, the plant world also sprouted from the hot desert floor. These were sometimes shrubs and trees that immediately responded to the moisture that is usually denied them. But how did it actually come about that precipitation levels of sometimes over 200 millimeters were suddenly recorded in the Sahara, and thus values that normally correspond to the average annual amount? Well. In principle, a certain amount of precipitation in summer is anything but unusual in this region. But what was extraordinary this time was the aforementioned involvement of an extratropical cyclone. This formed over the Atlantic, moved southwards, and brought humidity from equatorial Africa into the northern Sahara. The fact that the so-called intertropical convergence zone extended as far north as the Sahara was, to put it mildly, unexpected for the experts. And they assume that the shift in the rain belt is due to the record sea temperatures in the Atlantic. Why the Sahara is on the advance and greening up at the same time. So far, so wet and unusual. But apart from that, the desert seems to continue to do desert things and stretch its dust dry arm out over more and more land. In any case, a 2018 study published in the Journal of Climate came to this conclusion showing that the Sahara is steadily growing. And it's not as if it's only been happening since yesterday. In fact, the desert has increased in size by around 10% in the last 100 years. To arrive at this conclusion, experts from the University of Maryland analyzed precipitation data from the corresponding period and used a climate model to separate the influence of natural climate fluctuations from the possible effect of climate change. The result showed that the desert has been expanding for some time due to a combination of natural fluctuations and climate change. The scientists determined about two-thirds of the increasing dryness in North America can be attributed to purely natural fluctuations, while the rest is most likely due to climate change. In principle, the deserts of the subtropics generally form due to the so-called Hadley circulation which causes warm air at the equator to rise and sink as dry air in the tropics. According to the researchers, however, climate change will intensify this circulation, thus triggering a northward migration of the subtropical deserts. This assessment is also consistent with the observed shift of climate zones toward the poles, which is also responsible for the increasing aridity in the Mediterranean region. In view of this, however, it seems all the more surprising that this change is also associated with a completely different trend. 
namely that the Sahara is greening in some areas. This mainly affects the Southern Sahara and the adjoining Sahel Zone. However, there is still a big but. The desert foothills will only turn into green regions if man-made climate change continues as before. At least, this is the prognosis of some climate models that assume a continued increase in CO2 in the atmosphere. And so it is that the experts at the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology expect that in this case, the central and western Sahal zone and the southern edge of the Sahara will actually become significantly greener by the end of the 21st century. But how does such a green belt fit into the image of a constantly growing desert? Well, according to the researchers, the awakening of the plant world is likely due to the fertilizing effect that the increasing concentration of CO2 in the air has on the flora. It is common knowledge that plants need CO2 for photosynthesis. They practically breathe in the gas and, with the help of sunlight, convert it into building materials for their cells. Against this background, the principle also applies that plants grow better the more CO2 is available to them. Well, but only if there is sufficient precipitation in the same breath, of course. However, it is still unclear how precipitation will develop in the Sahara. Nevertheless, seven of the 30 models predict that by 2100, there will be 40 to 300 percent more rain in the Sahara than there is today. And at first glance, such a development may well appear positive. In addition to increasing vegetation, it would also provide significantly better conditions for agriculture. But at the same time, the transition phase from one climate to the other could also be accompanied by fluctuations between droughts and floods, and affect an area between Sudan and Mauritania, in which over 100 million people live. Furthermore, the green belt of the Sahara is likely to be relatively short-lived. Experts base this on the fact that CO2 emissions will probably fall significantly in the century after next, as the fossil coal reserves will then be exhausted or very difficult to access. Consequently, heat and drought will again come to the fore and steadily push back vegetation. The Green Past of the Sahara If the experts are right in their prognosis and the future really will bring a little more greenery to the desert, then the bottom line is that the Sahara will only fall back into familiar patterns. After all, it is now considered certain that the desert has flourished repeatedly over time and not just for short periods but sometimes for several millennia. And in fact, the last dry phase of the Sahara only began between 4000 and 3500 BC. But what actually causes the Sahara to undergo a constant interplay between a burgeoning savanna landscape and barren wasteland? And how does this change occur in detail? Well, that was precisely the question that the experts at the University of Lipsing were trying to answer when they examined a sediment core almost 20 meters long from Lake Sidi Ali in Morocco a few years ago. The sediments stored in it covered a period of around 12,000 years, and by examining the dust layers, the researchers were able to determine when it was particularly dry or humid in the Sahara. And the bottom line was the surprising result that the transformation of the humid green Sahara into a dusty desert world was by no means a smooth process. And what's more, it didn't even happen just once. In fact, the climate in the period 10,000 to 5,000 years ago fluctuated from wet to dry on multiple occasions. So before the Sahara took on the appearance we know today, 4,700 years ago, the climate pendulum repeatedly swung drastically back and forth. But why? Unfortunately, that is a mystery that still needs to be solved in the future. And yet the knowledge gained in other places has also shed some more light on the desert darkness. The previous analysis of sediment cores from the former Sahara lakes and from the seabed off northwest Africa had in fact yielded very contradictory results, which can now be explained by the abrupt climate changes. Although there was an overarching trend towards a drier climate when viewed over longer periods of time, this was repeatedly interrupted by the sudden climate changes. The examination of the samples from the time of the sudden droughts thus indicated a sudden transition while the samples from a wetter intermediate phase suggested a more gradual emergence of the desert. And if you like, then ultimately both camps were right, even if they each only covered part of the whole Sahara truth. And you now can cover both parts of the subscription truth with your click. Simply press the like button and subscribe to never miss a new video from us again. 
See you soon.